I felt good about all year. I like being around these guys. They're, it's a fun bunch of guys that, you know, realistically going into the season, they had to prove everything uh, that they're getting because there wasn't a lot of hype uh, nationally. And uh, it's been fun coaching them. How do you feel the guys' approach has been this week, just staying focused yeah. and, and relaxing? We kind of did what we did last week. Just tried to work out fairly early. Uh, interesting that our first game time is at 11 because that's when we had our practices called for all week. So it kind of worked out a little bit. Although tomorrow we'll be eating breakfast at 7 a.m. as a team, but nobody really cares at this time of the year. Just really happy to be playing. Uh, the focus has been good. I mean, I'm kind of jabbing them every day. What are you guys doing from one till whenever you go to bed? You know, they're playing putt putt golf, they're fishing. You're just being a kid, it's a good thing. You and Mike Bianco have been around simultaneously what for a long saying? time. Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> you're tenured. Yeah. What have you thought about what he's done, building oh, this program at the same time you've been around? He's done a great job. I mean, they have, uh, they're always good. Um, he's an outstanding coach. He works with pitchers and catchers and oversees everything. Uh, have a lot of respect for him and, and uh, you know, their whole program. I mean, they've had our number, as you know. I mean, we've had a hard time against them, especially the last four or five years. So um, just try to find a way to get through the weekend. You talk a lot about when you face Childress, that you guys know each other's tendencies. I mean, does it come into play when you face a guy as many times as you face Ole Miss? Well, you know, this, is, this will be game number six against them in the same year. Obviously, we play three every year. They're in the same division. So... You get a little worried about, you know, tendencies and signs and different things. Sometimes you switch it up a little bit or change an indicator or whatever the case may be. But really it just boils down to making pitches and fielding and hitting and uh, whoever plays the best will win the series. Dave, you, Every, go ahead, Nate. Everybody is healthy now as they were when the week started. Yeah, nobody's gotten hurt this week for the most part. You know, we have a little bit of sickness, but it's the same old stuff. It's nothing that's going to take someone out of a game. But... You know, uh, I, I feel good about where we are physically and mentally. And you, you mentioned the Ole Miss has kind of had your old number. You feel like, hey, the odds are in your favor to turn that around because they can't keep having your number. Well, I mean, I don't I, – I just look at it like this. We're going to play three games if needed. We just need to play good baseball. And, you know, at this time of the year, it doesn't matter if it's Ole Miss, LSU, or anybody else in our league or our division – it's just about playing well. You know, last year we had to play South Carolina after playing them four times. I had to play them number five, six, and seven. And uh, so we learned from that a little bit. And now it's just it's just play. It's, it's just do what we do. And like I said, you, you just hear me repeating myself. It's just we can only control what we control, and that's our team. And if we play good, we got a shot at winning. Any decision between Nolan and um, uh, what plan you're for tomorrow? Uh, no, we'll wait and see how it goes tomorrow, and then we'll make a decision on who we're gonna who we're gonna pitch on Sunday. And I know the mound was covered, but the, the tarpon on the field is there. How come you guys didn't practice on the field? Well, the tarp has been on the field two or three times a day, on and off, because they're trying to fix the field. Uh, we didn't practice on the field because the field's really muddy, especially at the shortstop of the second base area. Uh, today's practice basically is uh, working on swinging the bat a little bit. Um, turning some double plays. We could turn double plays a lot better in here on this stuff than we can playing around in the mud out there. And we we practice on our own field a lot this year. We kind of like it in here every now and then, honestly. Is the way this work means you, you guys did this, so Ole Miss has to come in here? Is that the way it goes, or do they have that? No, they can do whatever they want. If they want to go out there, let them go out there. I mean, like I said, it's they can do what they want with their their team if he wants to be out there. And it's, if, Because I don't blame him if he wants to be out there. Uh, they haven't been out there since when the end of March. Um, I would want to be on their field as, if I could, whether whether or not you know the home team is inside or not. So I imagine they'll go out if they can't. They could split it. They could go a little bit in here, take their outfielders out there. They could just hit out there and keep the infielders off the dirt. There's a lot of options there. But our our practice revolved around flipping some double plays and you know turning those. Uh, we wanted to. That's why we came in here. Looks like you guys are pretty loose and. Uh, Looks like you threw behind Martin intentionally. Oh, yeah. oh man, I can put it anywhere I want at any time I want once I get <laughs> loose. But uh, no, he, uh, you know, he wanted everything in a certain spot. And anyway, you heard me. So uh, yeah, we have fun out here. The team's loose. I mean, we're either going to win or lose, right? And we're still playing. There's 16 teams, and hey, I hope it goes good. If it doesn't, 
it's been a great year. If, if not, we'll continue on. What have you liked from Christian Franklin as a freshman just this year and as he kind of mentally prepares for the postseason? Yeah. Well, you know, he's had his ups and downs. You know, he, 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 he really struggled at the play. Well, he started out great. I mean, if you think back on about 15 games in, he had 20 RBIs, leading team in RBIs, hitting the nine hole. Everybody's wondering why I'm hitting him in the nine hole. And because uh, I knew it was going to kind of be like that. And uh, then he's had some down times where he's fought through it, but he showed a little bit of maturity by not going crazy. And said this before, slinging his helmet or slamming his bat in the bat rack. And But what he does every day, he shows up and plays pretty good defense. He brings a little speed to the team. And he's been he's been steady. You know, he's, he's been a good freshman that didn't have to carry our team. And, and it's like I said last week, I just want our freshmen to contribute. They don't have to be the stars. It seems like your season really turned around when you figured out Wicklander and Nolan in those two, three roles. So what, what did that do for you guys? Well, they both throw strikes. They both compete hard. They're both, you know, advanced a little bit mentally for, for being, you know, freshmen. Uh, it just kind of, it, it set the rotation so our, our bullpen knew that they were in the bullpen. You know, Cody pitched a little bit and then he got sore arm as far as starting and when he came back we kind of had that all settled in and, and it became a situation where we weren't you know trying to start ramage or we weren't really trying to start cops they were going back to the bullpen it made us better what's the scouting report on Etheridge? well you know first off he's a really good competitor uh, you know his fastball is going to be anywhere from 89 to 95 probably 94 uh, a little bit of a little bit of sink and a lot of run ball runs into righties away from lefties Pretty good breaker, throws change up. Um, we've seen him a lot. He was a reliever last year. Went to the, went to Friday night, and uh, what he does for him, he, he he brings maturity to the first game of the series, and he throws a lot of strikes. There's a lot of freshman pitchers that are going to be starting in this. That you said the other yeah. day that you can't get to this point in the season without freshmen. Yeah, you just don't have enough scholarship. I mean, you, freshmen have to contribute. They have to find a way, and uh, whether it's on the mound or you know defensive replacement or just a you know, a guy out of the bullpen or whatever, but you know, you get, you only get so many guys on your team and a good percentage of them every year are going to be freshmen. You get so many juniors drafted every year, they're gone. You're bringing in freshmen, maybe a JC guy or two. So when you look at it, you know, maybe a third of your team's freshmen every year. So they, they've got to help or you're probably not going to, you know, get to play very long. He's got four homers this year. He's got three in the last three weeks. He's just running into some good pitches. Yeah, but he's had power. I mean, we can, He's got as much power as a lot of the guys. He's got as good a bat speed as anybody on the team. Bat speed creates balls that jump off the bat, and uh, he's just caught a few right. So he's also got about six or seven balls that have hit the top of the wall that he's got doubles on, and we were kidding him about it. And he finally got his first home run. Now they seem to be getting out of the park a little bit. But good hitter in the three hole has been pretty steady for us. That's another thing that really helped us solidify our lineup. And we put him at three hole. Took Ezel to the to the one hole. We we got better. What's that Kerstad be successful for you this year? Say that again. Kerstad. I'm from out of town. I'm okay. maybe saying it wrong. What's helped him be successful? Well, he was successful last year yeah. too. So uh, I just think that you know he's he's been there and done that. He, he played every game last year as a freshman, and I I know he played 60 plus games, and he was in every one of them in the starting lineup. So uh, he's just been around, a lot of experience. He's just a He's just a good player. He doesn't get too high or low. I've seen him get mad one time, and it cost him a game because he got suspended. Other than that, it's been pretty even keel, and uh, you know that's what you need to do to play at this level and, and beyond. You know, Dave, Matt, Matt, Matt's a big Vegas guy. He had a note the other day about it. I think you guys are 5-1 to one Vegas odds to win the series <laughs> right up there with UCLA and Vandy. Um, what, what do you think about that? I don't really think about that at all, Bob. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I've never been to Vegas. Maybe I have it. I wouldn't tell you. So, <laughs> and, and um, at, at your age, does uh, does your arm get tired throwing BP? No, arm doesn't get tired. Other parts of the body start hurting. Usually the hip or the knee or something. You do, but I guess you do that so you must enjoy it. I assume. I do like it. What What is it you like about it? I like to see the ball come off the bat. I like to be able to talk to these guys a little bit when I'm throwing and challenge them a little bit and throw in and out and it just so it's not like just. Going up there, going through a routine, they you know they get they get, they have to compete a little bit, and uh, that's what I like about it.